Okay, I think we can start our uh, talk right now. Uh, so good evening, my name is Raluca Sasmarinescu. I'm a PhD uh, uh, assistant professor at Babes Boya University Theater and Film uh, Faculty uh, Theater Department, Romanian Theater Department. Um, and I will be uh, together with my colleague Andrea Tompa, uh, your host for uh, this evening. Um, Andrea Tompa, my colleague, is also a professor at the uh, same university, same faculty, but in the Hungarian department. Um, I would uh, briefly like to, to welcome you to our uh, discussion, uh, who is a, a part of a project host hosted by Paintbrush Factory, a project called uh, Outside the Box. Um, and um, in order to, to know everybody, before the discussion starts, I will briefly uh, have a presentation of the artist that we have invited. Uh, for tonight. So uh, together we are, with us, we have Mattia Ferlin, who is a Croatian theater director, ensemble dance piece choreographer and performer uh, of his own uh, one-man shows. Uh, and he's uh, graduated from the School for New Dance Development in Amsterdam. And uh, he um, lived and worked in Berlin and Toronto. Um, we have Lisa Ferbellen, who studied theatrical performance, uh, but also theater studies and dramaturgy at the University of Amsterdam. And together with four other colleagues, uh, she founded the theater collective BOG uh, based in Amsterdam. And we have Oliver Zahn, who is a German theater maker working in various capacities, both on stage and behind the stage. Oliver Zahn performance as a circle around the idea of memory, history, and immaterial knowledge. Um, so welcome uh, to our uh, uh, invited artist. We are very happy that you are together with us because we are proposing a very, we think, uh, important uh, topic um, that will start, I will try to start by explaining uh, how uh, we here in Cluj at the Faculty of Theatre and Television see this relationship between uh, performing arts and um, a higher education uh, system. Uh, and I will try to describe um, the system that the Romanian department uses uh, in teaching our uh, students. We have three uh, different areas uh, of uh, study, acting, directing, and uh, theater studies. Um, each of these classes from the acting and directing part have uh, like um, a professor that is, is uh, designated from the first year to the third year to, to be the main professor of, uh, uh, of the class and to teach uh, the acting part uh, for the actors, the directing part for the directors. The theater studies part is differently uh, organized because there we have uh, different professors that are, uh, are teaching uh, also uh, main courses but all, and elective courses. Um, the problem, the, the biggest problem that I find uh, in uh, our system is um, ac actually a two-headed uh, uh, problem. Um, one of them is the um, collaboration between these three uh, directions of studies that um, is um, only uh, four hours per week between the directing and acting classes and the theater studied class, studies classes uh, do not have access to, to this kind of collaboration. Um, me, myself, I only have one class where I encourage this kind of collaboration between the uh, playwrights uh, or the dramaturge with the uh, directors, but it's only a two hour um, uh, class per week and uh, it's only in one semester uh, for three years. Uh, so the, the main problem that I see uh, in this system is that actually um, persons who are supposed to work together when they finish, uh, the, when they graduate, uh, in uh, the time of, of their education, they are actually working separately. And uh, one of the, of the other problems is that there is, um, as far as I can feel it, um, 
um, less or no correlation to the needs of, uh, of uh, the performing arts system that the students are facing once they finish uh, their, their uh, school, because we do not prepare the students for all types of uh, uh, systems that they are going to, to, to challenge when they finish uh, uh, their education. So this is what's happening in the Romanian department in Cluj, uh, not all the theater, uh, uh, faculties from uh, Romania work like this, but uh, I can only speak from my experience and from the things that I, I can observe. I would like to invite Andrea to uh, have a short presentation of the Hungarian department of the same faculty, because one of the things that we were discussing right before this, this meeting, minutes before this meeting, was uh, one problem that both of us have uh, which consists in the poor collaboration between these two departments that uh, are uh, living in the same building, in the same classes, uh, um, and students that are meeting on the, on the hallways every day, but they do not work together. So, Andrea. Hello, everybody. Um, I, I, I will try to make a short presentation of uh, my department. Um, so we call it the Hungarian theater department and it's not a performing arts department. So the name of, uh, of this department already shows that how traditional and how narrow is our understanding of performing arts. So it's a the traditional understanding of theater and drama. Uh, we have uh, a Hungarian language training for only two uh, kind of professionals for actors on one hand and dramaturgs or theater uh, scholars, theater studies on the other hand. So currently this, it's only two spe specialization and I will go back to this uh, division which I find a huge problem and my colleague Raluca already mentioned um, this problem of divisions. Um, to give a little bit of idea what context is uh, in uh, this Hungarian department, it's, uh, it's a minority uh, university department. Um, in Romania, we have a small community of 1.2 million people approximately, which uh, has uh, a kind of dozen theaters, including puppet theaters and a few independent groups. But also there is an other higher education training institution in another city in, in Târgu Mureș in uh, uh, Marosvan Sárhely. One of the big question is in our training that what kind of market we train our students. And also from this derives a dilemma that what is uh, our task is to prepare our students for these traditional expectations of the existing theaters or to train them of, with an ability to find their own voice and their creative powers. Uh, and this is a dilemma I would like to discuss with our guests later on. Uh, uh, the Hungarian min minority situation would, could, me have, could mean uh, a possibly fruitful fusion uh, of different cultures because a minority situation stays at a crossroad of both the Hungarian and the Romanian theater influences. The Hungarian big tradition in theater being the realistic theater and Stanislavski and Rum the Romanian tradition to put it in a very simplistic way would be a more theatrical expressionist one. But in the last decades, both theater cultures uh, uh, fight with their own traditions to find their new voice, to renew their own tradition. And this kind of fight um, is uh, mirrored also in the Hungarian minority situation. Uh, it's also a question how we see in our education system theater as a form of art, which is probably closer to understanding of the Romanian and the Moscow art theater tradition or a form of entertainment, which also is close to the Hungarian uh, theater tradition or a more contemporary form of communication. Um, 
the education represents a traditional and conservative conservative thinking about disciplines, uh, which we can call in our discussion uh, boxes, because uh, there is a very strong division between theory and practice, theoretical and creative training. And this is uh, probably uh, one of the most vulnerable, vulnerable parts of our training, this kind of division between theory and practice. Although some professors, of course, are activists for less rigid fusion of departments and disciplines, <clears throat> me personally being uh, someone who has only joined courses for actors and dramaturgs. But if we look at uh, our alumni, we always find dramaturg, dramaturgs who go on stage as performers, but very rarely find actors who become researchers or playwrights. And uh, conservatives is also mirrored in the fact that there is this very little crossover between the cultures and languages and conservatism also means a kind of being closed in your own culture, in your own tradition, and not very much looking outside uh, from this um, uh, language, language and cultural situation. So in, uh, in a very short, this is how I could this describe our uh, department and our educational system. I think we should uh, um, invite our guests to uh, take part of this conversation, um, starting this relationship between theoretical and practical part. And, how, what, what role should the higher education uh, have, should have in this link that I think that in performing arts is it's a must and in the traditional way of uh, educating it's something that we from time to time uh, seem to forget that there is a very strong connection between the theoretical part and the practice part. Uh, of course, uh, uh, I, I would uh, be very curious to, to, to hear from our guests from their own experience um, on the, around this subject. I can start. Okay, thank Hello. you, Matthias. Hi, everyone. Um, well, um, I kind of like, I think this the, the question that you are saying is, uh, is, is, is pretty important. And of course, all the answers I'm gonna give are based on my own experiences as, um, as a student at, in two various institutions, one in Frankfurt back in 99 and 2000 at the Hochschule für Musik und Deutschland der Kunst and back at SNDO at the School for Media Development in Amsterdam, but also as a honorary teacher outside, uh, uh, outside a uh, collaborator of, um, the Academy of Dramatic Arts Dance Department in um, Croatia, in Zagreb, and the Academy for Arts and Culture, Nonverbal Theater Dance, uh, Nonverbal Theater Department in Osijek, in Croatia as well. Um, somehow, like I think the question is very much, uh, I kind of related to the fact that I'm, I'm always actually asking myself. I ask myself this during my studies, and basically I'm also asking now while I'm studying. Um, while my teaching, um, there is this question that um, that uh, Andrea said before, the thing about actually what type of theater are we sort of interested in? What do we feel that the future of theater um, is in a sense of like this? And maybe for us who are more coming from the Eastern part of Europe where I feel the theater has uh, a strong tradition of um, a certain type of, uh, of classical theater appearing that the academia and the universities are somehow like following that uh, that somehow that that stream i had luck that i when i was 16 it felt logical for me to leave uh, croatia and go and find my my uh, knowledge my studies abroad due to the fact that i was not even able I, we didn't have dance department back back then so i kind of went uh, to the to the university but okay, like we can skip this question of uh, what type of theater do we want? <laughs> Coming back to the fact of, uh, I studied a choreography school. I mean, I, uh, I, I, I finished my school for Indian development was a school, it still is, that somehow like was seeking for um, 
artists, uh, like you said before, young voices who were into uh, creating their own work. I had a luck to enter the school when I was really, really young at the age of 18. And, uh, but somehow like what they taught that a course for choreographers should be, uh, I didn't have so much interest to, to, to actually to do my own things, but the, all the knowledge that I've got from SNDO when I sort of transmitted into me, into my work as performer was actually very much rich program uh, for me to, uh, to follow a choreographic program, but actually being interested to become a performer afterwards, comparing to some other friends who did strictly performative, uh, performative uh, courses or uh, performative studies for dancers or actors. And they did not have this wide angle of, uh, of, uh, of different languages, theories, as I did there. So uh, when it comes to the theory in this way, uh, we had really super engaged uh, the teachers and very much, uh, very, 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 very present. And the benefit of uh, the system there for me, it was the fact that um, we had a high amount of uh, exchanging of professors. So now this traditional is also here like typical time where you belong to one teacher who is your main teacher, and then you kind of like shift with others. Uh, it's more, I feel that the setup of SNDO was made so that um, it was basically like around, I don't know, 60 workshops a year. And I found me going through these different processes within four years of studying there, um, created a, a really wide range of uh, the ability to, to interpol it in my own work later. And also the fact that um, the freedom to shift between programs, like taking uh, classes at a film academy, like I felt I was a versatile artist. Like I came from graphic design. I was interested in dance. I did a lot of theater as an actor. And I felt I kind of found out that choreography for me was a place where it actually kind of includes all those, uh, all those interests of mine, depending on which medium. And the, since the school was some kind of like in a very sort of like liberal uh, way, the way it was treating uh, the program, and you are kind of the creator of your own interest, I felt that was really, really, uh, really, really helpful. And uh, a lot of things, uh, you know, a lot of writing, a lot of, uh, um, I mean, I actually argue about this thing back in, uh, you know, I had, uh, I had real issues with, uh, with writing and with, uh, about my work. I had a really hard time when I was younger, I didn't have time to, didn't have a knowledge to actually how to even like, I was not even interested in. And the, for, and the school somehow didn't force me into that. They perceive me, they value me as an artist who doesn't need to, uh, to write about his work in the way that maybe others did. And this I felt, uh, back then I maybe felt like, uh, oh, I need some pressure from them or something. But actually from, from seeing it today, I was just also not ready to do that. I was pretty young. But from seeing it today, I felt like the deep respect I got from the university in a sense of like what my interests are and what my uh, need is to develop in which direction I want to go. When you can sense the, this by the, by the academia around you, then this is really a, kind of a, a helpful thing. So uh, I went like all over with my sentence, but uh, yeah, I'm just to make a conclusion like, uh, I, my, my university, I, I left Frankfurt because of the fact that I felt I was in a too disciplined uh, uh, environment when it comes to studying. I felt that studying was about like me uh, evolving and me somehow like developing, not necessarily like the way the knowledge was treating, the, the knowledge was treated and the way I was giving it was like too, uh, too, too practical. Uh, and I was not actually biting. I kind of felt that I need an environment that's gonna allow me to like be immediately part of like, uh, of my interest and in that I'm actually uh, able of uh, reach something that I don't know. So the system in Amsterdam for me, the school was really like, uh, I, if I would be born again, I would again go there to this school because I think it was really an, uh, a really specific and really uh, beautiful experience of how, um, how, in what way you actually, you sort of like treat an artist growing into a world. Uh, into himself that uh, where his interests are and how you lead him with how much attention sensitivity or not it was with a lot of attention thank you Matthias
Um, we could go on with this uh, uh, question of uh, how you see in your practice and how you see in higher education this kind of division between theory and practice and how maybe which are the ways to overcome this division if they must be overcome. If that's, that's a question or um, I'm just putting on the table. I would I would speak, switch over to Lisa because uh, from her CV, as I, I saw, uh, she around she 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 works also around Amsterdam, and I think that maybe she will will find some uh, uh, so give us some answers uh, also uh, around this question. Uh, yeah, the what you said about my CV was not entirely true. Oh, sorry, <laughs> well, I didn't, that I've got. It, there must some, be some miscommunication, but I didn't study Probably. dramaturgy in the university. No, theater studies. Yes. Uh, I did in Maastricht, the performing mm -hmm. arts, and I did a master in um, Den Haag of music theater. And I think the other one that you wrote down was from my dramaturg, but that's Probably. okay. I still have uh, uh, things to say about this. Um, yeah, like. Um, at first, I think it's very good that you uh, you think about it and try to like emerge it from within while being in there. Um, I had I, I'm also very very happy with how they did it in Maastricht, which is like they have like the acting department, they have the directing department, and they have the the um, performance theater department. And when I came there, it was very new, and like everybody around would ask me like, what do you do? And it was like in that time still a bit like impossible to really explain. You would be like, yeah, I'm an actor, but I'm also a director. I make my own, I write the things that I do. And in the beginning, it was like really like her, but so are you on TV or not? Or like, what is it? But it's it's uh, cool to see that like in only the 10 years that I graduated, like I have the feeling that this question no longer really arises that much with the people who study there now. So there is a, a big change already in in how the the field developed in the last ten, ten years here, and I think that's that's probably happening in a lot of places. Um, there were already examples when I was studying of people doing what I studied, but it was just a minority. And now I have the feeling it's like um, it's not anymore this kind of a big question. There are a lot of people who who do this. So. This I'm very happy about. Um, it was very practical, and I think maybe like um, Mattia also felt a bit like I, I, to me that was good because I was not really ready for the theater, theoretical stuff, and this is more something I, I used to do later uh, on my own. Um, because I loved being for four years like. Um, pushed around and like only making, making, and there was no break. It was just like going for it full head. And um, you learn a lot from that, but it was really not theoretical. There was no time for that. It was, and, but it, the nice thing was that when I graduated, I really had this moment of like, but wait, why? And what is need, what is necessary? Why would I make art? What if I get like this opportunity to be an artist and why? And so it, it, there was no time in that four years to, think about that long because it was just like in two weeks another performance in three weeks another performance but I think for an education that was a for me it worked that it was this practical um, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious that you said like that it's traditional in, in Romania and in Hungary to have like one teacher that seems like a like a bad idea to me yeah uh, <laughs> to have one teacher <laughs> Um, okay, I will try to a little bit explain this system. Um, uh, it's working. Uh, yes, it has. It's as we before this conversation, we had a short, brief conversation with Andrea. It has its uh, va values and non-values. It has its pluses and minuses. This system, um, y y for my point of view, the, the bad part of the system is that the. Uh, having one professor who is working uh, actively on a practical uh, uh, approach uh, with the actors and training them only in the way that he uh, uh, believes uh, it's working. Uh, I think that it's a system that uh, it's 
not so good for our students because it's not related to what kind of market we are preparing our students for. Because we, are, in this way, we are preparing our students for only one uh, uh, one way of seeing uh, theater or one way of seeing acting. Or uh, in the Romanian department, we also have the directing uh, uh, class. Uh, so it's only one way of directing, which is based. Uh, for the directing part, uh, I will have some examples here, which is based on the traditional models of a, a very uh, specific hierarchy where the director is the, the main character uh, in the act of creation. He's taking all the, uh, the, the decisions. He's uh, having the main responsibility. He's the one who's deciding what uh, you are going to play when, uh, how, uh, and in, in what kind of aesthetics or what kind of key. And this model is the model that uh, our professors who are having, uh, each of them uh, are responsible for one year, uh, 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 are, are, is the model that they are teaching uh, in. And so here's the other question or the other problem that also Andrea uh, pointed out, the relationship between the higher education system and the market that you are preparing your students for. Because you're not preparing your students for a market that it's looking all, only for one kind of an actor or mm -hmm. who are uh, looking for clones. I'm sorry, I, I have to be this, this harsh and use this, uh, this word uh, that I think perfectly describes uh, uh, this system where a, a professor is creating clones of himself. Um, and uh, of course, in Romania, we have uh, these two kinds of, uh, of uh, uh, looking at the theater, the traditional way. Now we have uh, specific numbers of theater financed by the, the, the local authorities or by the national, uh, by the government. Uh, and we have um, this uh, independent, what we could call independent companies, but because we have a, a very poor law for uh, the sponsorship, uh, for example, or we do not have dedicated programs in financing uh, this kind of uh, uh, um, programs or independent theaters that are working uh, on the model of theater making and not uh, on the traditional uh, uh, model. Um, we only have one big uh, um, op financing opportunity, which is the National Cultural Fund. Uh, and all the, these companies are looking uh, for the finances from the uh, National uh, Foundation, uh, for the cultural, uh, cultural uh, National Foundation. And it's um, quite limited as a market. Uh, it, uh, these two ways of uh, perceiving theater but the school only looks at the traditional way and teaches the students to work in the traditional way where the director is coming and it's having a proposal of a text uh, that is going to be, to be debated, worked and uh, uh, transformed into a performance. Um, of course, there are also uh, the good parts because uh, this is a way where you can create a, a very good ensemble. Uh, and uh, when they finish school, there are theaters that are uh, uh, offering contracts for uh, a big part of an ensemble. For example, we had experience where a whole class went uh, uh, to a theater and they got uh, uh, their contracts there. And so they stayed together and tried to to, uh, to, to bring a new vibe to that theater, a local small theater, for example. Um, or um, uh, we have like nationwide, for example, is one of the, the schools that is getting the most prizes uh, when our students finish uh, their school and they go to, to uh, state theater, what we call state theater, theater uh, which are the theater founded by the local authorities or uh, uh, the national authorities. So they have a permanent founding. Um, uh, the, the most important prizes around nationwide go to students that uh, finish our uh, school. So uh, I think there are ups and downs to this system. Uh, but that I think where Andrea is right is in the part that uh, we are called theater department. 
we are not called performing arts department. Uh, for example, we have a master program that it's called uh, performing arts and film but um, this program is more theoretical it's in Romanian not in Hungarian and it's more theoretical it has only one uh, practical two practical classes uh, on installation and performing performance class and a creative writing class but that's it mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And this model of uh, uh, dividing uh, uh, the work uh, between acting and directing and, of course, theater studies on the other part, it's a model that it's also, uh, uh, you can find also in the master's degrees programs from the Romanian department, I'm, I'm talking right now, because in the Hungarian department, as far as I know, and Andrea will correct me if I'm wrong, there is a master in contemporary theater. Uh, and I, I know that there, there are some chances for the students to work together in some classes. But um, it, it's strange that in, in 2020, we, thought, we talk about some activist professors, some yeah. classes that offer the chance for the artists to work, work together. And yet, it looks like it's a system that it's working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because but we do not have our students um, our students do not come forward with this problem. So somehow, somehow, the system is working. Well, I, I know maybe that's a nice small story for this, that how this performance um, theater uh, education in Maastricht was developed was because there was one girl who did the uh, audition for the school and the, the teacher thought like, you're not an actor, you're not a director, but you're very good, what are you? And then she herself said like, well, maybe I'm something else. Can I start my own something in between and like have some classes with the directors, have some classes with the, with the actors? And then they said yes. And then the first year she was on her own in this new uh, Yes, new Lisa, but somebody said yes. Yes, exactly. That's what you, of course, need. But it, 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 yeah, yeah. No, true. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Somebody have to say yes. And, <laughs> and we are talking here about a system where we have uh, between us professors fights, real fights on concepts that are coming from performing arts and are creating like, you know, a war between a concept that's coming from performing arts and a concept that are coming from classical theater. And uh, we, we have different approaches and we find ourselves uh, fighting. Uh, uh, and when I say fight, I mean a real word fight uh, uh, on, for example, what dramaturge mean. Uh, in a traditional way, uh, for example, uh, it's uh, assimilated to the uh, literary secretary, uh, but Romania theater lost this, um, uh, this practical uh, approach of uh, working on a text with a dramaturg near and uh, um, it transformed it. Uh, of, of course, also, it's a, also a, a problem of a political problem and a historical problem because of the Communist Party that uh, shut it down the uh, theater study departments. Uh, but um, talking about higher education, for example, uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, theater school in Romania, theater schools. Uh, we have a theater studies department in Bucharest, in Sibiu, in Târgu Mureș, in Iași, but uh, uh, they focused mainly on management and cultural management, marketing, uh, and this part of the theater studies, and not so much on developing, uh, for example, skills for writing or teaching their students that they are uh, also uh, need a practical approach uh, on their work and they have to work together with the, their colleagues from the acting classes and directing uh, classes. There is another, uh, for me, completely un not understandable situation where uh, the Hungarian department does not have a directing class uh, program. Because we don't have somebody to train directors. Yes, I, I would. That's a very simple reason we cannot build up a department for 
training directors when there is a, such a terrible lack of directors uh, in uh, uh, Hungarian directors. But I, I would like to uh, to ask Oliver because he he as a performer who has this huge uh, who is doing a huge theoretical work in his um, creative work. It does not really look like somebody who is sharing himself between the practical and the theoretical. And I would like to hear his his experience of becoming who he is now. Um, yeah, well, so I studied directing for theater and opera very, very classically. Um, mm at a very classical school and I had piano lessons and um, Italian lessons to be able to read um, the text of operas and I had singing lessons and that kind of thing. And then I also had a burnout in my third year and took a year off from school um, because that was not really what worked for me. Um, and that is actually when I kind of I uh, came into my own and started working in a way that was interesting to me. So, I mean, I would definitely say that I was in a course that was too practical for what I was looking for, or rather that the practical elements of the course were not kind of supported by theoretical reflection, I would say. Um, but I was also pretty alone with that in my course. So we did have theoretical classes as well as practical lessons. Um, most, most of the others who were in my course wanted to have more practical stuff. I was kind of, I didn't have enough theoretical um, yeah, not not enough of not enough theoretical support to to work on what I was actually looking uh, for. Um, so it depends. I mean, now I'm doing very essayistic work that is still not academic in any way. Um, but I also feel that I'm yeah, like my the road that I kind of took to get where I was was kind of weird but also in a way necessary like there are schools in Germany that um, that work differently right that are not classical um, directing schools that do not push this idea of the genius director uh, um, kind of creating everything by themselves. Um, but at the same time, when I started, and I started when I was 19, so when I was really young as well, um, I, did, I wouldn't have known that that was what I was gonna do. And so I would say to the credit of the course that I did take, um, I was allowed to, um, kind of go against what the school wanted. Like that was not impossible. It was just very exhausting. Um, and at the same time, the support that I got through um, working at a school that um, trains classical directors was also a lot, just the resources in, ter in terms of um, spaces in terms of budget and in terms of um, just workshops and everything is was just so, so much more higher than what I would have gotten in a different course, like a course that is more um, geared towards performance, for example. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a to, to me, it's a very, very difficult um, it's a very it's a very complex difficult subject i also had a it was kind of the same situation as 
uh, you were talking about Raduka and, and, and Andrea. Um, we also had uh, several di different departments for directing, uh, acting. There was a stage design department, a dramaturgy department, and there was some sort of collaboration between those departments, but it wasn't really existent and everyone kind of pushed their own agenda. Um, and every one of these departments also had like one head that kind of shaped what that was. And for example, in my case, I just had a gigantic uh, conflict with the person who was in charge of my department. And like the luck that I had was that this person went into retirement while I was on leave because of my burnout and someone else came in. And that was when it started to become a bit more um, uh, accommodating, I would say. And even then there's like another um, aspect to it that I would also like to bring in, which is the way that a school is structured, like depend, like um, just in, in for, for example, the, the school that I was working at was kind of modeled after a state theater in terms of its building, in terms of the, um, the administration of the school, um, in terms of the way that pieces were produced there and so on. And so even though there was a, um, it, even though it was possible to do something that did not fit into this very classical mold, the, just the um, school as an institution and as a building kind of prevent or, or try, tries to prevent that um, from happening. So like the, the, just the amount of energy I had to pour into kind of like um, making sure that um, I was not being forced into that mold was um, like almost as much energy as I, as I was able to put into the, into creating the actual work. So um, and that kind of feeds back to the, um, to this idea of like which market in, in, in air quotes, uh, 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 a school should prepare um, a, th their students for. Because I think that like in this case, it's probably very convenient to do it in that way. If you want to work in a state theater and if you are of the opinion that the system that is in place is right. But it's really hard if you A, do not want to work in that um, field because, for example, I, I work uh, as, as a freelance artist and I apply for grants and I tour my work internationally. And that is just the skill set that is um, that is associated with that is something that I did not learn in my studies at all. And the same thing goes vice versa. Like if I talk to people who went to the more uh, in, in Germany, who went to the more um, um, I would say maybe experimental schools, they have the same problem with the state theater system. Like when, when they are approached by state theaters and when they first work in state theaters, um, something that has happened to a lot of people that I know is that they were kind of overwhelmed with the demands that that system puts on them. So it's, it's, it's really, um, I think, a problem once it becomes too fixed yeah, that, that kind of meandered a bit, but maybe it's it was a bit productive. I, I just want to say one thing, which is I find very interesting from where I sit now. I mean, based in Budapest, and I commute and travel to Cluj, where I haven't been since January because of the pandemic. And it's a very sad situation. Uh, it's my uh, birth, um, city of birth. Um, so uh, we always see the Western higher education as something like very strong and much better. And now I hear uh, you saying how disappointed you were with your own institution. And uh, uh, I find very much of responsibility to give to our student another option than, than the like the traditional state theater repertoire being able to be part of that and what is very uh, important 
in this present situation that you, through your own practice and with the workshop you offered to our students, um, you come with your own personal experience and your knowledge and your presence as performers and giving this example that this there are other ways of thinking about theater and of course we are trying to teach them a lot or show them I, I don't use the word teach when I when I when I'm working with them but to show them other ways of thinking about theater but uh, to have this kind of very um, close relationship with a, a stage performer is very important to have. And we are responsible for showing these alternatives to them so they have the choice because one of, one of the big misses of the school is that we don't really have enough options to show on or what we prepare them for. So um, um, th there is one question I wanted to ask you if you ever experienced the kind of reforms of a institution from inside. You were telling us, uh, Matia and Oliver too, how disappointed you were with some uh, institutions you were part of, but have you seen or have you experienced this kind of change which uh, Lisa uh, described as somebody approaching an institution and saying, I'm a new entity he here, somebody who does not exist in this, in, in this institution before, not this or not, nor, nor that. So have you experienced such a kind of process of change in a, in a kind of more rigid conservative type of institution higher education system? Well, I could just say that I believe it's like everyone's um, I'm talking about teachers or artists uh, teaching at a higher educational system. Like you come with a certain responsibility uh, when 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 teaching in those uh, in those constellations. And for me, um, so last year, a nonverbal pro master program opened in uh, in Osijek. And somehow Osijek, it's a, it's the western part of Croatia with a like really uh, it's a it's an art academy like uh, they have various uh, departments so for the as there's a master's degree in a nonverbal two years and i was being asked to kind of like be the first teacher um to sort of like uh, get give like a master workshop of six weeks throughout the uh throughout like half a year but from other things. and um, we are talking about a very small community like and also like established in a very traditional type of theater and also the students that arrived are uh, not all of not all of them and most of them are uh, maybe uh, not so familiar with like uh, I don't know, contemporary theater as i'm related to it in a sense of like oh what i'm kind of considered and there is also like there was no option for them to witness it except youtube or stuff like this so um uh, Okay, there is an uh, there is an effort from the from the academy itself to open another uh let's say uh, non-existing department in Croatia, so they do. Uh, they have a uh, interest to kind of like uh, also bring people, teachers that uh, can offer maybe a different way. But I take the most responsibility. You know, I feel like, uh, I mean, I come there and I'm asking them to uh, unlearn perhaps everything that they know so far, because that's important for my type of work. I ask them to uh, to take risks in a places where they don't and it can be for some students it's really like it's a resetting like uh i can tell an example on the fact that uh, i've had a student why i've even asked him like what's your interest in uh, i always ask them in the beginning like what's their interest why they even inscribed this thing and it was the first year so you know something called nonverbal, and i'm sure all five of us here can refer to nonverbal theater differently and um you know, his interests lie in like the physical aspects of slapstick, of what, of the comedy and stuff like this. And with a deep respect, but me personally, I found that as a really narrow way of looking at um, non-verbal theater. And for that, maybe you don't need two years of studying. You might also need um, only a workshop or you can be done with it in two weeks or something. Nevertheless, I did not talk about it. But after six weeks, I asked them again the same question, all of the students. And at least 70% of the students changed the idea of why they inscribed nonverbal 
theater department because uh, the workshop itself made uh, made a made a big influence in a way. So I feel like for me also when I look at my university and my studies, like I started dancing because I took a workshop with Helga Musiel, who opened Tanzfabrik in Berlin, and he was like, I was 16, and he said like, um, you know, I'm just suggesting you. I felt trust. He said, go there, try this. I went. I mean, there is some like some students, some teachers have really like made an impact on on my work. And I feel so I think like within the system in a way, I mean, if I feel as an artist that that system uh, or that environment requires a shift or a shake, I'm going to, sh I mean, personally, I, I will shake it without any uh, problem or uh, I don't have, uh, I don't need to, uh, how do you say, uh, funny, but what you talking, what you were talking before, where actually we have, you have in, in our region somewhere when you have this teacher who are having their own actors for many years you know i don't do the same i do the same as well i don't have them for many years i have them for six weeks so if you're kind of exchanging them i don't think they're doing anything wrong i just think there's a system of four years it's way too long to be stick to one but i teach actually i mean i also do the same thing i teach no, not my vocabulary but i teach my interests i, I you know i teach uh, the theater that i believe in and what i think it's important in it and it's completely the opposite, of course, of what another teacher is teaching. But I don't think that's, uh, it's about getting, it's about introducing languages, different type of languages to uh, students, it's about creating them uh, kind of like open, because I think when someone is 21, 22, whatever, I don't think, you know, we don't know really where we are at and what do we want. It's just about letting those like uh, doors open. So I think in our, also the system is maybe not so rigid as in a, uh, Romania but it's still very uh, classical in a way but I feel like since there are a lot of artists are teaching at the academies and I feel like you know a lot of students like relate to an artist to his uh, work to his uh, um, to his type of thinking and they're like you know maybe they follow him maybe they don't but I feel the importance it's really needed that like you keep introducing people to uh, to other artists that you can use them to other practices, other like uh, other types of work in order to uh, for them to find, um, yeah. Okay, I, I will have just a small information. Um, we had, for example, this kind of event that Andrea was uh, referring to when we switched from the four year uh, system to the three year system because uh, we had to, 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 to switch to the Bologna system. And the main problem that I see from that uh, uh, change was that everybody from the university tried to, to push in into the three years all the knowledge that they were teaching or all the, 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 the uh, things that they were doing in four years. So this was a, a sort of a forcing um, um, the time and um, um, the students now, for example, from the acting classes, uh, they work uh, seven days a week uh, from uh, morning till evening uh, with their professor that is leading the class um, um, in, in a very alert uh, way, uh, of course, the the school offers also workshops uh, for our students. We have uh, uh, all kind of uh, artists that we are inviting from all, all over the world, not uh, only Europe or not only from uh, Romania. But this kind of workshops usually take uh, about two weeks uh, in one semester, and after that, the student is coming back to the to the uh, to the professor that he has for for those three years and uh, he's working with with uh, the same in the same system and so we have uh, also fights on on the rehearsal uh, times for example because in in some way i don't know how we we came to this conclusion that every semester in the romanian department has to to end with a, a, a performance that the students from the acting classes are giving instead of a acting exam so uh, and, and also the students from the directing class each has to direct his own performance so 
we also have this uh, confrontations between uh, uh, um, for, for the rehearsal rooms and for the times that we are uh, uh, offering our students to rehearse uh, together with their professors or together with the directing classes. So uh, I think that's important that we are not talking about a four year system, we are talking about a three year system, which is um, much more dense and much more. Um, yeah, but on the other hand, no, you can, I mean, you have three year system that you can uh, shift it to a five year system, no? No, you have four years. Exactly. We have we have two, three year uh, bachelor degrees and the two year master degrees, but the model from the master degrees, it's not uh, necessarily something that continues uh, what a student started at the uh, three years uh, bachelor degree system. I know, but when, when, when we talk about, I feel I find it personally ridiculous to study acting for five years. Even if I think of it as like going into a master, thing, I don't know what else. I mean, of course, depends if you can narrow it during the master thesis. But what happened with us here is when we went to the Bologna system, we actually we didn't do we didn't squeeze it to three. We opened it to five. A lot of students, because of their stability and because of their comfortability, they remain studying five years within the uh, within the school system because it's actually good. About from anything, you can still work a bit around, but you still have some sort of security. You're still not on the road. You're still there. So, uh, but I still find like within the five-year program, that can be a really, uh, uh, it's an amazing time to sort of like get to uh, get those kids really like in out completely and like mm -hmm. offer them so many things. But yet we kind of decide to uh, just fulfill some norms mm -hmm. and some like not so much actually deepening. But nevertheless, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like the, in everything, there is like a lot of like, we have a lot of issues and a lot of problems, but I mean, it really comes back to the, I think maybe I'm not saying it's important, but this market of what we are producing the, you know, like, I don't know, like we have, we have one, two, I think we have four academies in, we have four academies in Croatia. We have around, I don't know, maybe like 40 to 50 actors a year graduating. Mm -hmm. And we have like, I don't know, we have three national theaters. We have like, I don't know, seven, eight city theaters. And I mean, I would like, I don't know why, like, I don't know why our actors like don't have German or why are we not like, you know, like, uh, why are we not like uh, educating our or preparing our like uh, actors for a German market? Because we, we are just ending up being with artists, with so many artists with like graduation and with stuff, but there is such a like uh, lack of, uh, lack of work. So not about, I think that, I think even if you come from a different school, you will find your way onto the market, but I think the market needs to exist. And I feel the number of how much education is actually present and how much like we have, I'm just gonna give one last example. There is an, uh, so we have uh, the new uh, dancing academy in Croatia started like seven years ago or something like this, six. And um, it's, a, it's a performative department for as a dancer. So, uh, but of course, when they come out and the dance scene in Croatia is really struggling for the past 20 years and it's going, but it's, you know, there is no, there's no so much work for like eight, uh, 12 for uh, pedagogues, uh, for uh, teachers and eight uh, students every second year to actually find. And also the funding and then, oh no, sorry, then what they start, they also start, they go immediately into their own projects, into their own authorship. But then I was like, why do we, did we, we decide to then make a choreography school? Why do we need then uh, actually a perform performing uh, as a, like a, a dancer education? Because anyhow, you know, then, then we come you have the young uh, generation needing to apply for money. The budget doesn't raise up in the same way. So because there is new people applying, so we are going higher. No, and then it's like becomes tension. And it's really not, uh, I feel really like calculating the market, not what the market need, needs, but like, what is the market? I mean, if I have, if I have this size of a house, I can fit this many people. That's like a logical thinking for me. So I don't know why. And if I cannot, then, uh, I'm gonna I make another comment. Uh, sorry for interrupting you, but uh, uh, this uh, I think we will go to the second part of our meeting, and it's also available for Oliver Lisa uh, for everybody. Uh, um, this question around the market: How does the market looks uh, uh, right now? What are the needs of the market right now? Because we are from March, we are facing a pandemic that it's increasing, and that should at least shape. Uh, the our way of teaching uh, or the professor's way of teaching because we, we have to adapt to new uh, ways of communicating with our students. Um, there are schools that um, 
uh, went uh, completely online. Uh, there are schools that uh, stayed on site, like for example, our school, we have a mixed system. Uh, we have classes that are uh, on site and we have classes that are online, but we don't know how much we will be able to prolong this on site way of teaching because it's depending on the cases that uh, of COVID that we have every day. It's depending on the um, uh, if we have uh, uh, positive cases in the school or outside the school, what's happening in the city and so on and so forth. But uh, what I think it's important is how this pandemia is shaping this relationship between a higher education system that it's clearly uh, debatable if it's ready for an online teaching, uh, effective teaching. What kind of artists are we preparing and for what kind of market uh, that it's arising from this kind of, of, of unfortunate events? Because the market is shaped by these exterior events and it's also uh, uh, moving uh, exclusively uh, online. So what kind of artists are we preparing right now for this online market? And how can we prepare our artists for the online? Uh, uh, how performing arts are looking in an online environment? I don't know. I, I think there are a lot of questions to be <laughs> answered here. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a it's a tough question because I absolutely respect every performing artist who says that they are not interested in um, working um, with with like web based uh, formats. And like I have pieces that I have postponed for a year, like from from last April to next April because I think that there's no like equivalent for that at all online. And I think it really depends on, on the practice of, of every um, artist, whether they are, whether this is like something that's like a viable path for them or not at all, in which case obviously there's a big problem. Um, to like, it's, it's been a while since I graduated, um, but one thing like just from people that I know who are currently studying or who are about to graduate or who have recently graduated or who just gained, um, who just like started to be, to have their work invited to festivals and so on last spring, I mean, it's obviously very hard because the the one thing that I think a school can do is to make sure that their students' work is being seen by um, as many people as possible, right? And that is obviously very hard at the moment. Um, but I also don't think that there's a like there there is no easy answer, right? Because if if your practice is not compatible with um with the current the limitations that are currently in place then i think it's just a just a problem that i don't really know the answer to yeah i i agree but i also think like um i mean i, I don't know how it is for students but i i see in my work now that like i don't think I'm not so interested in the online <laughs> world in that sense. And I, I I think it's also a bit dangerous to have this, or you could see this in the Netherlands a bit, that like the moment this pandemic hit in, like two weeks after everyone was online. And I was also a bit like, wait a minute. I mean, we don't, there is also something wrong with the, the like how much we are trying to go on and go on and go on with all this out uh, these things coming to us that change our practice like maybe we should not do the practice when it when we can right like maybe we should take the time to be more uh, into the theory of things and maybe more reflective about things like to me this was more a lesson in that like i'm not going to try to to um i don't think we should push every artist to to do their work online because 
it we we've been like touching each other since since like millions of years ago like why would we suddenly be able to i mean it was almost an um an insult to film i think that so many people in theater were like suddenly like we can do it on a screen and i was like what well maybe not you know like i need to i need to, the eyes of the people to to see look in their eyes and like have all this energy stuff that i don't know the names of but i mean that's just so when it doesn't work I, I would not push it also not with students but it's hard because of course they are eager to learn and and but the, but maybe it should be more theoretical than for some of them yeah i mean for at least for i mean yeah definitely like yeah like like i said like if if it's not something that you're already interested if like if if this is not something that you were already interested in before the pandemic i don't think it's a good idea to force yourself to become interested in it right now but at the same time like i'm i didn't watch any of the stuff that ha like almost nothing of the like um that knee-jerk reaction online stuff that that happened right after the the lockdown but at the same time obviously i mean there's also an economic dimension to it, right? I mean, for a lot of people, at least in Germany, like it was, um, it was also a question of being able to get the um, funding money that they were promised. Like they had to do something uh, in order to get it. And like for example, I mean, I'm I'm in an okay economic situation in terms of in terms of grants and, and funding, and so I can afford to say I'm not going to do this piece for for a year. Um, but at the same time, I can also see why that might not be an option for other people or for people who are just graduating. Maybe it's, 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 I think it's very com it's a very complex um, question. Yeah, it's absolutely true. Yeah, it's a it's a very nice if you can like postpone things without. Yeah. Uh, I mean, how was the just just out of curiosity, how was the, the, the situation with you? Because, for example, here in Germany, I got money for every sh live show that was canceled, basically. Like I didn't get the whole fee that I was owed, but I got like most of, not with every show that I that was canceled because I obviously I had like a bunch of shows canceled. But for most of the shows in Germany, I got like 60 percent of the fee that I was going to get. I got even though it was canceled which is obviously a pretty okay deal regarding the situation. And I'm curious as, as to hear, it's a bit off topic, I'm sorry, but I'm just very, very, very curious to hear. Not necessarily. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, can, I can tell you what happened in Hungary. Uh, Hungary uh, has a large culture of the state funded theaters. So they just got their own subsidy uh, without performing but the independents got really zero. So uh, all of the independent artists living on, on grants and on e e box office and, uh, and also not only independents, but the private theaters, uh, they just, they didn't get any state support. The only thing they got recently was a one, one amount, one amount of, of money, which is less than 1,000 euros. And for that 1,000 euros, uh, each artist has to make some, um, uh, to, to create something new or to, per, to perform something. Theaters are open currently in Hungary. So it, it was the lockdown in the spring, but then in September, everything opened and Although the pandemic is very, the COVID situation is very bad in Hungary, but the theater are still performing. Uh, there are very few, fewer and fewer viewers because of course people are afraid of gatherings and stuff like that. But there was, was no, uh, basically there was no state support or state kind of um, grants in this situation. Okay, and I can answer, answer for Romania. Uh, the situation is similar to the to the Hungarian situation. Um, the state theater got their full uh, uh, support, and the artist uh, stayed home. They only had to to prove that they were working. 
So uh, they had to rehearse online, for example, or to do like, I don't know, poetry uh, recycling and filming themselves while they read poetry in order to, to prove that they are doing something and they get their full payment uh, uh, this time. But the independent uh, uh, sector was uh, in, in, and it is in a very bad situation because we only had uh, a small funding for independent artists from April to June um, uh, uh, in worth around 300 euros per month uh, per artist uh, but only for a part of the independent artist that could prove that it had some contract cancelled and this went on for the uh, initial lockdown uh, uh, time uh, but there was and there is no state funding for the uh, private or independent uh, companies that in, in this time they have to pay rent, they have to pay, uh, uh, I don't know, electricity, they have to pay everything. And uh, for a short uh, period of time that we uh, weren't in the lockdown, uh, because now we have, depending on the cities, we have a theater closed, uh, but for a short period of time, um, uh, the independent theater worked with 30% of um, uh, of the audience present, which of course it's not enough to uh, uh, at least uh, uh, pay their rents. So the situation for, for the independent sector is really bad in Romania also. Um, we had a, we had actually um, every sort of like, um, every artist that proved his artist practice uh, for the months of March, April, and May, or actually April, May, and June, um, received like a somehow like a help of like in total like 1,500 euros more or less, something to that for that period of time. And we were kind of like here back, we kind of got back to performing during, during summer immediately. So, uh, and the things that were canceled, uh, I must actually say that a lot of like, uh, funding uh, structures like Ministry of Culture, different cities, regions, cultural uh, institutions that are supporting were really, really flexible with the way you uh, defend your money spending. It actually even advice for the people to pay their collaborators regarding if the project is gonna happen or not. So kind of like the, the independent scene um, witnessed uh, some sort of like uh, flexibility when it comes to the fact that how are you gonna actually you, you could have gone through the fact that you are not, you don't have to make a project, but actually pay uh, the people you kind of uh, need for some cities, not every city decided this, but they were really actually um, generous in this way. And then uh, for, um, or I also have, for example, I got funding, but the money was so late that then uh, the project was postponed for next year, like Oliver had for the next year. And then, um, they didn't want to take me, they didn't want to accept the fact to put the money on the next year, so I had to apply uh, again. And then other institutions said, like, it's fine, you can have two years to do a project, or it really depends. But uh, um, it was, I must, yeah, it was It was not maybe so, uh, I also had the ability to, like, uh, I don't know, France, producers from France, they were actually capable of giving some uh, money for cancellations. Uh, some cities like in Europe also did other, some theaters also did, others did not. It was kind of like not really a, a general thing for, um, for everyone. Uh, we have uh, some time for a last round of questions. And um, I yes, think- If, you're, if, if yeah. you're interested, it was just announced right now that we're going to be entering another lockdown on Monday. So all theaters are gonna close again. Right. In Germany. So, in Germany. Yeah. Ah. So, which means yeah. like that, like all the shows are gonna uh, um, be canceled again and stuff. Yeah. Honestly, I would be happy in Bud if in Budapest they will um, lock the theaters uh, down again. It would be very helpful for the situation. But they don't. Uh, they did not announce such a thing yet. So I thought about a last round of questions. Um, uh, I, I think. Our discussion is mostly around the synergies of kind of classical higher education models, which uh, we presented you at the beginning, and those kind of um, 
ways of thinking as put in the title outside the box. So we are trying to, to talk about the synergies of these two traditions or these two kind of thinking, way, ways of thinking. But my question would be to you as a to you as performers as um, um, artists who are creating contemporary theater, what are the let's say benefits what or the gains of the classical higher education training if there is any because we here criticized our higher education and uh, our own ways of thinking or the ways of thinking represented by our institutions but what you in your training gained from a kind of a more traditional training if there is any gain uh, to me, there was certainly a gain. We were very tra traditionally uh, in the fact of the using of the voice and the using of the body. It was like together with the actors, it didn't matter that we were the performing um, studies. And it was three times a week, just standing and saying a text and being um, trained in how to use your voice. And I, I, I really benefit from that. Um, and that's a very traditional thing, but also like something you can use like forever and always. I don't think that will go away. Um, so yeah, I'm, 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 I mean, I'm, and I'm also happy about um, the traditional way of like the, the, the study is so dense and like, so like, it's almost like a monastery where you are for four years. And I think that's also kind of uh, traditional in a way, but I, that also, I benefit from that a lot, from like this, um, the, the almost no escape. And they, I mean, because it was this extreme, they also um, tried to, to offer you the space of delivering critique on the, on the way where, what it, how is it, how it is done. And I think that is very important that how you can create like students that dare or that feel safe enough to give critique on these very traditional ways of learning. Um, and I think they did that very well where, that, where I studied. They were very traditional, but also if you talk to them and you come with good arguments, then they, there was something to talk about. Even though it was a, a lot of uh, hard fights, you know, like it was not easy in that sense, but there was room for it. And I think that's, that's important. Um, I can uh, I can just say that for me uh, I mean I would consider myself as a very uh, although I'm not my work is not like this but uh, I'm really I'm I'm a fan of tradition and I'm really explored the tradition in theater in my work a lot and I twist it around and I shape it differently and the things I know I kind of like to twist them for 360 degrees and uh, so I'm really much interested into tra into tradition into the conservative into the like. Um, yeah, somehow like static, let's call it. But uh, for me, it's important that even during studies, I was really much aware to what is tradition and where I am at with my mind and thinking. Like, so I didn't think that tradition was the only thing that existed. So I just find that was also actually the tradition that I went, the traditional schools that I did, it was really important to, uh, I, was, I was aware of how like, sort of like close structures there are but they were also offering like a ways for me to stand out and to see this closed structure deciding like, okay, am I going with it or not? So I think it's also about, um, I think the traditional higher education system in some way, it's not necessarily bad or I mean, not necessarily bad. I mean, it's good if it's shifting, but it's not necessarily, uh, uh, it can, uh, it, it needs, it has to be really important that the, that a, that, that a student actually has the ability to, uh, you know, to perceive it as, as, as it is and not to be actually blindfolded and thinking of this as like the only way out. So uh, I, uh, I go and I see a lot of classical theater, like I, uh, I'm really not a fan of it, but I am I'm needing it for my practice in order to be uh, commenting, in order to be uh, uh, in it, to be like shaking it. So in this way, and it was the same with school, you know. I was a rebel. I was a bit of a, I made my own way through it. 
but the school was fine with this. He was supportive to that. Okay. I mean, for me, that's like different things. I mean, I'm very grateful to have had like certain kinds of very classical training. Like I'm happy that I had like singing lessons and that I learned Italian for two years like even though that's not necessarily something that I use in my practice now, but it's still just um, things that I'm grateful for. Um, I, obviously, there's also a kind of elite elitism in those institutions that is problematic, but that the people who are in them very much profit from. Like if you do, if you go to one of the performance schools or one of the more experimental schools in Germany, you're in a class of like 50 or 60 or 70, um, or maybe even 30 if, if you're like lucky, but like I was in a class of three, right? So just the amount of time and the amount of resources that one person gets is obviously a lot higher um, in those classical institutions. Like I don't think it necessarily should be, but it's just right as of now, it's just like a fact. And the other thing is that, like, even though I do not, like, I don't work in opera or classical theater, I have a very clear understanding of why I don't do it. Like, I have a very, like, I'm very grateful that I got to know these fields very closely in order to have an informed opinion on why I don't want to work in them. And even though that's maybe a bit uh, kind of, a little cynical it's still something that i'm quite grateful for um because there is a curiosity that people who didn't go through that gauntlet in a way have with those systems that i just don't have from my um from my studies because i know them very well So as a conclusion, uh, I would like to point out that the role that the higher education should have uh, in the link with performing arts uh, would be as an eye opener uh, towards the possibilities that an artist has uh, in the moment that it's graduating from that, uh, no matter how um, what, what kind of model the, the, the university or the school that is graduating is having. Uh, this role as a, a eye opener should be the main focus of, of the higher education. So, or at least this is what I take with me away from this uh, conversation that we had today. Yes, thank you very much everybody. Thank you, thank you for doing these workshops for the students and uh, we Hope to get some feedback from them too. Um, and um, I hope this somehow continues also between our institutions, between um, what's the English name for Fabrica de Pensule? The, In Brush Factory. The, yeah, the Brush Factory and uh, the, the theater, uh, the, our theater department. So um, thank you again for sharing these ideas and these dilemmas uh, today with us and uh, hope we will gain something from these discussions with our students too. Thank you for inviting. Yes, thanks a lot guys and let's yeah, show our support so to our colleagues from Budapest <laughs> who are fighting oh, for their freedom every great. minute as every day and uh, we are there with them and hope they, they will be free. Thank you, Raluca. <laughs> so mm -hmm. thank you, everybody.